This is the newest hotel in Las Vegas, the Fountain Blue. I'm so excited to finally be staying here. In this video, I'm gonna show you around my room right here, give you a review, share with you the pros and cons. I'm gonna show you around the hotel amenities on the property, tell you what I like, tell you what I don't like, and ultimately at the end decide was it worth the price I paid, which I'll talk about that as well. All right, let's start by checking out this room. This is room 1581 on, you guessed it, the 15th floor. It is a blue king room, and so as we come in, what do we see? We see blue, and we see a king. Uh, it is a big room, there's lots of space in this room. There is a nice table for two over here. There is a big window. What if I look out on in this room? Uh, almost nothing. There's a wall over here. It's so reflective at night, you can't really see. There's a peak view of the strip over here, but uh, I did ask for a quiet room at the end of the hallway. They gave me that, but not much of a view. I'm okay with that. If you want a view, make sure you book a room with a view. There is a nice flat panel television right here. It welcomes me. Let us know it's about 53 degrees in Vegas right now. There is the standard mini bar setup. All of this is on sensors and no doubt costs a lot of money. Right here, uh, the hotel has like this bow tie theme, so everything is bow tied. The ice chest tray is a bow tie. The um, coasters are bow ties. This thing that has QR codes to learn about dining or bars and lounges uh, all has a bunch of QR codes on it in the shape of a bow tie. Uh, down here is the um, cold mini bar, censored alcoholic drinks. It is nice though that right here, there is a drawer uh, that is a refrigerator drawer for your personal items as well. Super key, uh, I love that. Thank you Fountain Blue for giving me a space to keep my stuff cold. This is a nice velvety drawer that has a couple of glasses in it and some napkins back here. I should also point out, this is like a leathery, very nice high-end finish on here. Bow ties for the handles. And then over on this side, there are four drawers, room for you to put your stuff. Same thing in those other drawers over there. I wanna point out over here by the headboard, they have some really interesting controls for the lights in this room. You just like push a button to make the lights go low and then it dims the lights in the room. Look, now that's that evening mood lighting just by the push of the low button. Uh, and then if we wanna turn them all back on, we push all on. And then to close the drapes, I just push and hold that button over there and then the drapes go closed. There's a sheer drape and these regular drapes. So that's nice, pretty lazy. I can just close the windows like that. But in my room, turns out nobody's looking at me. So I don't have to worry anybody's looking in here. Uh, there's one large sofa over here with an interesting picture up on the wall. Uh, oh, plenty of chargers in this room too. By each headboard, there are two plugs, two regular USB, two USB-C. You find that on this nightstand. You find it on that nightstand. And what I thought was super cool is down here under this lamp, they've got power and they've got USB charging underneath that lamp. So that's super cool. They thought about all the places that you're gonna need power outlets. They've even got power outlets that are right here next to the sofa too, in case you wanna put a laptop or charge something on that table. This is the closet in the room. Uh, we open that up and what do we see in here? We see that there is a luggage rack down here. There's lights that turn on. It took a little while, I don't know why. Uh, new hotel, so we got slippers, we got a robe, we've got the bow tie up here. We have a steamer to help steam maybe your dresses or your clothes. Um, there is a nice leather shoehorn safe in the corner and laundry bags. I like all those amenities, so thank you Fountain Blue for uh, keeping robes and for giving us slippers in the room. This is a connecting room, so hopefully whoever's over there is quiet tonight. There's all my stuff. This is the door I came in through. There is a big mirror right here. Uh, it's like floor to ceiling mirror. It's also got a couple of places to hang coats or something like that by the door. And then going into the bathroom, it is a very nice large bathroom right here, starting with the sink. Uh, lots of towels on the bottom, hair dryer. We got the sink up here uh, with the bow tie, uh, body lotion, shower cap, all these kind of like leatherette things, nice toiletries. We've got like Q-tips and you know, everything else you would need over there. 
Uh, and we've got hand towels plus beauty towels. Nice soap here. And then to control the light, they've got this little vanity slider right here. So you can push your finger down on that and that dims it right there. Based on where you kind of put your finger on that, it puts that to the particular setting. It controls the lights in the vanity and the lights up in the ceiling too. Uh, there's also a, one of these mirrors on the wall for shaving or makeup if you wanna be close uh, and that does illuminate as well. Then back here, there is a very large soaking tub and a blue sphere on the back. This is like a mirrored thing that's kind of like concave, reminds me of something that's in a fun house, but I like how this is a very deep soaking tub. Then looking back into the bathroom, we have the shower right here, full walk-in shower, one fixed head, uh, and also, thank you, how do I open this door? Why is this door not open? Arr, this door takes a lot of force to open, I think to make the water not go out there. It's like sticks, what, quite a lot. Um, we've got these nice blue soaps that you can bring home with you. Thank you very much for that. And it's a Speakman shower head right there. Oh, and the lights that are in the bathroom, I like that you can make them all on, all off, or you can put it in the nightlight mode, which mm -hmm, I found some of these buttons. They like don't work all that well. Now the nightlight turns this on, but I think in order to get that on, I need to do all off and then I need to do nightlight. And then there we go. You just get the nightlight that's underneath uh, the sink. So uh, I always have an issue when I go to bathrooms in the middle of the night, I'm like, I can't see anything. So thank you Fountain Blue for the nightlight. And then there's a final room in the bathroom, which is the toilet room. Uh, they sealed the toilet paper with this nice gold thing. And the toilet room has its own little um, glass door as well. All right, now that we've seen around the room, let's go check out the rest of the hotel. This is the hallway on the 15th floor. Pretty nice. It's tall, bright lights, well done. Hotel's only been open for two weeks, so no stains on the carpet yet. Oh, and something I like, self-service ice is available on the guest room floors, and the ice machines, in addition to having ice, also have water dispensers too. So if you bring a bottle or cup, you can fill that up right here. The elevator lobbies are nicely done too. What do I like about the elevator lobbies? They have windows so you can see outside while you're waiting for the elevator and some place to sit and a phone if you need to make a phone call. There are three banks of elevators to go up to different sections of the hotel uh, and they do check your room key card before you get on the elevator, but you don't have to use your room key card once you're in the elevator. You can just press a button since I'm on the 15th floor. This this is the first bank. Uh, let's see if the pool is still open. 9.20 at night, probably not. So I might check that out in the day, but we'll see right now. Looks like it's locked, so we'll go ahead and come back tomorrow. Okay, since the pool's closed, let's go for a midnight snack. Maybe a 10 p.m. snack. I'm in front of Shea Bon Bon. This is the like 24 hour cafe coffee shop at the Fountain Blue. And I got the, it's melting, but I got the uh, sweet crepe here. Dulce de Leche Banana, $13 for the crepe fresh made and $5 for the milk. They have a lot of pastries as well, fruit, things like that. So this looks like a decent breakfast option. I think I'm gonna hit the hay and then I'll come back to eat breakfast tomorrow and then we'll check out the uh, pool and the fitness center when those places are open. First morning breakfast at El Bagel at the Fountain Blue. The bacon sandwich here, $14 and the orange juice, $8 plus tax, $24. And the crepe I had last night was so good at Shea Bon Bon at the Fountain Blue that I came back for another one. Nutella with strawberries, $14. Okay, after breakfast, I finally made it into the gym. 14,000 square feet. This is an amazing gym. They've got things I've never seen before in hotel gyms. They've got these big tires that are uh, 176 pounds. They've got this like football style sled. They've got uh, all these treadmills that look out on the strip. They've got these like inclinator type things uh, over here. They've got ellipticals and you can see like the stratosphere up here in the distance but that's not all. 
they've got some kind of like neat places to sit in the middle but then there's a whole another room over here as we go past the weights to some of their um, I guess more of the like they call it the technical room or the stretching room they got lockers here in the center nice lighting effects up on the top the air is really good in here it smells good smells fresh uh, but you can see there's this whole weight section over here and then a stretching room over here where you can stretch or they can help you stretch and just outside the fitness center they've got a hair salon and over here coming soon an ivy drip lounge so in case you've had too hard of a night partying you can get well here later also on the same floor as the fitness center but just past the guest elevators you'll find the lapis spa and wellness where you can get a whole bunch of extra spa treatments the fitness center is included in the room rate the spa treatments are not but this is where you'll also find the nail salon complimentary self parking is included for hotel guests in the quite big parking garage they've also got a whole bunch of these lights up in the ceiling so you can see where spaces are when the lights are green there's a parking spot nearby note there are two sets of elevators if you're checking into the hotel you'll want to park near the hotel guest elevators also if you're valet parking you can valet park uh, but it is not included in the room rates valet parking is $40 a night now there are a couple of really neat art pieces that I am gonna mention here this first one it's called oceans it's right at the main entrance from the strip and this one actually visualizes the tide kind of looks like some ocean waves right there and the other cool sculpture is this three-story piece you'll find this one all the way in the back kind of towards the entrance by the convention center Center in front of Shea Bonbon, bon, the 24-hour cafe. I signed up for the Fountain Blue Rewards Club and put $20 into the Shrimp Mania 4 machine. What did I win? And the answer is nothing. Turns out these shrimps, while cute, were not the lucky charm I thought they would be. All right, now that we've seen everything around the hotel, we've seen the room, we've seen the common hotel areas, it's time to do my hotel review where I share the pros and the cons of the hotel. We'll discuss is it worth it, and then I'll conclude with whether you should stay here or not. And so to answer the question of is it worth it, I have to tell you what the price was. So I stayed here December uh, 23rd and 24th, so the two nights before Christmas. The first night was $210, the second night was $150, $45 resort fee each night, plus taxes, total for the two nights was $514. So I tell you that because my review is based on that price. So uh, now I'll rate the hotel on a scale of one to five Tophers, if you're new to this channel, I have a traveling panda, Topher. He comes on all my hotel adventures and helps rate the hotel. So Topher, how many Tophers is this hotel gonna get? It's gonna get four Tophers. All right, thank you, Topher. So now we'll talk about the pros and the cons of why the Fountain Blue Las Vegas got four Tophers. So first pro, the room. It's really nice. It's a big room. It's got a big bathroom. I like the big soaking tub. I like the really good water pressure. The price was right. Uh, now, if I was paying, you know, $500 a night for the rooms, I might give it a slightly different rating. Uh, the internet was really fast in my room, like 15 megabits a second, which as a content creator who uploads a bunch of files, that is really nice. I liked the air conditioning in the room. I could keep the fan on all the time, so uh, I could also put it down like 66 degrees and it cooled my room. Very, very nice. Check-in was quick. There was no line when I came to check-in and throughout the two days of being here, I went through the lobby quite a bit and never saw a long line. I went to a lot of different hotels on this trip and I've seen long lines at those hotels, so that's nice. The staff, they're all very friendly at check-in. They were friendly everywhere in the hotel. They were friendly. Many of them are fans of Yellow Production, so that was awesome to see. Many people were like, Chris, I love your videos, or oh my gosh, you're here. So that was super cool. They're also really good at cleaning this place. Like, they're cleaning all the time. I mean, all the time. Scrubbing the floors, driving these cleaning things around, so the whole place just sparkles of cleanliness. Speaking of cleaning, uh, they also provide daily housekeeping for the room, and I didn't have to to ask for it so that's nice too although they don't provide turn down service so you know no chocolate on the bed or anything like that and the final pro the amazing fitness center I mean if you like to work out if you're a gym nut you will enjoy that fitness center and to like show me around like legitimately one of the staff was like would you like a tour I'll be happy to show you around which was super neat all right so let's go on
on to the cons. The first con that I experienced getting to the room was my Wi-Fi in my room didn't work. And this wasn't user error on my part. I connected my MacBook laptop, I connected my Android phone, neither of them worked because I was connecting them to the SSID that says like Fountain Blue Guest and I put in my room number but then it just would never connect. Turns out there's a secret SSID, FB-Guest with a secret password that I had to call the front desk to get. So that was annoying. I spent 30 minutes racking my brain about why my internet didn't work. They didn't tell me this at check-in. They provided no way for me to get on the internet other than to not be able to and call the front desk to try and figure it out. Also, in my room, not all of the power outlets worked. Uh, so there's a ton of power outlets, but they didn't all work, which is really annoying. I was trying to figure out why my uh, drone wouldn't charge. Um, like, is it the cable? Is it the charger? Only to figure out it's the plug. Like, the plug, actually, no power came out of it. And I certainly don't envy the hotel of having the challenge of figuring out uh, plugs across all of their rooms. There's a lot of them that they have to test, but, you know, Fountain Blue, if you're watching this, go into 1581, check the plug uh, just to the left side of the bed, the left plug. Uh, the USB charger and the power outlet doesn't work. Now, while the curtains are cool in the room, you push a button to open them, I definitely prefer ones that have an open and a close button because I just couldn't figure out those curtains. Also, being that this hotel just had its grand opening, it's, I really feel like it's more of a soft opening. Like, lots of stuff is not open. Lots of the shops aren't open. Uh, I'm disappointed that the pool isn't open. You know, when I stayed at Circa for their grand opening, Stadium Swim was open when they opened, even though it was the winter. So I really wish I could have uh, checked out the pool. The location isn't great. This uh, north part of the strip, like there's not much to walk around here. Like today, uh, after I got up and you know had breakfast, I walked around the hotel and then I walked to Circus Circus and then I walked to Resorts World and then I decided that everything else was too far to walk. And so then I got in my car and drove around. So that might be the experience that you have here. If you stay center strip, then you don't have to do that. You can pretty much uh, just walk everywhere. Uh, you know, maybe it is convenient if you're going to something at the Las Vegas Convention Center because that's just uh, right out the back door. Now, there's a ton of restaurants in here, but they're they're too foofy for me. Uh, you know, like they some of them have like red velvet ropes in front of them to make them seem exclusive, and um, that doesn't make me want to eat there. You know, like I like food court style and yes there's a food court but that's like a minimal portion of the food they're all these like really high end we try to keep you out kind of places as opposed to places that want to invite you in but now with all those cons would I stay here again would I recommend you stay here again I absolutely would I really enjoyed how new and fresh and clean everything was the room was great I slept well to me those are the most important things in a hotel uh, just knowing that you can't walk around to a bunch of stuff and I think that with the fountain blue um, being open longer and figuring out all these things I think a lot of these things will work themselves out uh, like the power will work and more stores will be open and the pool will be open and so you know maybe by summer of 2023 maybe it turns out to be in a four and a half Topher hotel maybe only time will tell well, if you want to see more of the Fountain Blue, uh, you can check out my link right here where I actually take you around all of the common areas. We'll tour the food court. We'll tour the shops that aren't open. We'll tour the casino floor. Uh, you can check that out right there. And if you want to compare this to Resorts World, the other new casino where I stayed at the Conrad, you can check out my review of that right here or my whole Vegas playlist in the description below if you want to dive into even more of my Vegas videos. Well, fellow explorers, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video.